This is the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE Gold Line Special Edition and this is the biggest, baddest Scrambler of them all. So in this video we're going to do a review but it's going to be a little bit different from usual so make sure you watch all the way through to the end. The Gold Line Edition is £13,995 in the UK. Check in your country what the price is there. You've got this absolutely stunningly beautiful orange tank. I absolutely love it. The paintwork is fantastic. It's got such beautiful detail, all hand painted, and it really is a stunning looking motorcycle. You've got the uh, longer travel suspension on this with the um, gold anodized forks, and it would look so much better if they were black but unfortunately there's no option, that's the colour they come in, so if you wanted to change that, you're gonna to have to respray it yourself. You've got 250 millimetres, that's 9.8 inches of suspension travel, front and rear, and that gives this bike a little bit better off-road ability, especially on the bumpy stuff. On the road, hitting potholes, it's tremendous, it really is very good. So this bike is a great bike for tackling the gnarly stuff, and, um, it's better looking than an adventure bike, of course, as well. So this is the adventure bike for cool people, I would say, because it really is stunning to look at. On this bike, you've got a number of modes. You've got road, rain, sport, off-road, off-road plus, that's five, and a rider configurable mode, which is marvelous. You can actually um, set it up exactly how you like. So I'm gonna have a go at that right now. Okay, so go into modes and scroll through here. So I think we're going to home in And that is it, I've done it. Okay, now let's try and change the display. Oh blimey, how do I do that? This lovely Bonneville twin engine produces 89 brake horsepower at 7,250 RPM and 110 Newton meters of torque, that's 81 pounds foot at 4,500 RPM. And it's a lovely engine to um, ride around at low RPM because the torque comes in very early. And if you do rev it and give it some, it's a very fast motorcycle indeed. So if you're on the motorways, freeways, dual carriageways, this will pack on some speed, I can tell you that. Um, but it's also quite nice for burbling around as well in the countryside and in the cities, commuting and all that sort of thing. Um, the throttle is a little snatchy in rain mode, I would say, because sometimes when you're tackling roads that are very slippery, there's wet leaves on it, etc., and it's bends and, you know, it's a bit precarious. 
um, you, you want that sort of rain mode to be very dumbed down and it does snatch a little bit, so you've got to be careful of that. The front wheel is 21 inches in diameter, the rear is 17. Now, it kind of looks a little off balance because the rear is, is quite a bit smaller than the front. On a motocross bike, you normally have a 21 inch front and a 19 inch rear. On an enduro bike, a 21 inch front and an 18 inch rear, but the rear tire's fatter and taller, so the difference in height isn't that huge compared from front to back. But on this, there is a few inches. So, Visually, that kind of gives you a slightly off balance look. Riding it, um, it seems fine. It would be better with an 18 inch, in my mind, with a fatter, taller tire on the rear. But the tires are absolutely hopeless on anything wet. I mean, just coming up to here to turn around to film, the back spinning like mad, it's just on wet, muddy grass. So if you intend to go off road and that's gonna be wet, you must get better tires because they're good road tires, but they're hopeless in the wet stuff. Now, the wheelbase is quite long-ish, 1570 millimeters. Um, the rake is 26.9 degrees and the trail is 129.2 millimeters. Now on paper, that is kind of perfect for off-roady kind of bikes. Um, but in my previous review, just like three years ago or whatever, um, I thought the bike was a bit twitchy. It, it seemed a bit weird in the front. So I wanted to sort of readdress that point in this video. And when you first get on this bike, it, the steering does seem a little bit weird. And I've been trying to work out why, because it can't be the rake and the trail because they're kind of perfect dimensions. The wheelbase is, you know, fairly long. So what is it that's causing it? Is it the, the odd size wheels? Well, I don't think it is. What I've noticed is that the handlebars are mounted quite far back compared to the uh, point of, of turning, the axis. Um, and they're sort of the, the forks where they sort of go into the tubes. The handlebars are, are back rather a lot. So it might be that that causes it because it just has this kind of weird feel to the steering. You get used to it after about half an hour and it's fine. But um, I don't think it's anything else. It's got to be that. So if I had this bike with my own money, I would change the handlebars. I'd want them to be like three or four inches wider with probably with an old fashioned cross brace, like old motocross style. And, um, you know, I change a few things like that to make it look a bit better. On this one, you've got these accessory hand guards, which are great if you're um, crashing through bushes and trees off road or it keeps a bit of the wind off your hands as well. So um, that's something to have, but they do kind of get in the way sometimes. So there's pros and cons to them. As with pretty much all of the Triumphs, there's a little USB thing under the seat. You put your key in the side here and you remove the seat. And there's a little box here where you can put your mobile phone and if you can open it, and a little connector there for a USB charger. You've got a 16 litre fuel tank on this and it does 51 miles per gallon, United States miles per gallon, 61.4 British miles per gallon, mm -hmm. uh, which is 4.6 litres per 100 kilometres. So uh, the fuel economy on this is pretty good. Service intervals every 10,000 miles or 16,000 kilometres, which is fantastic. The bike weighs 230 kilograms, that's 507 pounds. And whilst that's not particularly heavy for a road bike, it is heavy for an off-road bike. Um, perhaps adventure bikes are even heavier, but that means it's okay for sort of farm trails and what have you, and tracks. I mean, it is capable, but with that weight, you know, that does make it difficult to ride off-road if you're gonna do anything serious. And I don't think anyone who buys one of these is really looking at uh, 
being a serious off-roader. I mean, it's good for occasional stuff. It's good to get out into the countryside. You can bowl along the motorway for miles, get to your destination, go down some farm tracks and explore, and it's fine for that. A lot of people kind of want to know which one to go for between this, the XE, or the XC. The XC is a little bit shorter. You've got a little bit less suspension travel and a tiny bit shorter wheelbase. Other than that, they're essentially the same bike. The XC is absolutely fabulous. I love it to bits, and it's certainly capable of going off-road down some farm tracks and what have you. This gives you a little bit more suspension travel, so it's a bit taller uh, and a little bit more capable at more bumps, basically. So that's the only difference. Height-wise, um, I'm six foot two. Obviously, I can flat foot it. I can flat foot anything. Um, but the riding position, you know, your knees are bent more than a right angle. Um, if you sit back like that, as you would most of the time on the road, it's quite comfortable to ride. And being tall, it's not just about getting your feet on the floor. It's about how you are when you're sitting on the bike. So you be the judge. That's how I look at six foot two. Um, I've got a 34 inseam and arms like an ape. So um, you can see how you would look on it in your mind. If you're shorter than that, obviously under five foot 10, you're gonna find it high and you'll be on your tiptoes a little bit. One thing I did notice uh, with the engine is as you build the revs, it does vibrate a little bit. Nothing too serious, but it is there, so I need to mention it. So if, if I were gonna spend my own money on this bike, and it's certainly a bike that I would consider doing that on because it is superb. These are the things I would do. I would put some better tires on. The suspension's fine, I'd, I'd paint it black. Um, I think it's got too many sort of silvery bits, so that would look better in black in my mind. I don't like the look of handguards, so I wouldn't have them on. I think there's too much silvery parts here, so if I'd either get rid of them or paint them black, I don't know if this is necessary. I'd say you can get your trousers stuck in there. Um, I would change the exhaust pipe for something that sounds a bit more raspy. Even have one that follows the line of the frame, because I think that looks quite nice on these. I would keep the seat. I love the seat. The grab rail here is very handy. This one's actually got an accessory bag on the side with a frame, which you can obviously undo and take it off if you want to. And the bag's got some little clips so you can take the bag with you once you get to your destination. It doesn't look particularly amazing, but it really is useful. And I found, I've kept it on. I was going to take it off because it looks better, but it was so handy to have it. I put the camera in and I went to the fish and chip shop, put my fish and chips in there, went off somewhere to eat it. So it is jolly useful to have. So um, that's probably worth getting. It's not quite like an adventure bike where you've got so many big bags and uh, boxes that you can put on it. Um, but in a way, it's a good thing because you can take too much stuff when you go somewhere, can't you? So keep it to the minimum, and this does the job nicely. Oh. 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 Now the dial screen TFT thing, I, I don't like TFT screens. I think it spoils the look of the bike. A bike like this needs to be really classic and it would look so much better with two analog um, dials, one for the uh, speedometer and one for the rev counter. That would look beautiful. And if Triumph are going to sort of 
upgrade or change the bike in the future. That's what I think most people would want to see. Uh, it's easy to read though, whether you're in the daylight or the nighttime, sunlight, whatever. So no, you can see it all right. But at the same time, it's very fussy, it's very busy. There's a lot going on there and I don't know what to look at. One of the things that does um, surprise me, when, you're, when you look at the mode you're in, which we'll come to in a minute, um, it sort of low lights and makes darker the mode you're not in. So it's the one above that. So that's a little bit tricky to, to work out at a glance. Uh, of course, once you get to know the bike, you'll, you'll know what you're looking at, but it's not intuitive. I think it needs more modes. You've got the button on the left here to change through them. It, it could do with a wet leaves on the road mode and a grass mode and a mud mode and probably a sand mode. That would improve the bike no end. Of course, I'm joking. Um, it's got far too many and far too complicated. And I don't want to be messing about changing the settings. Um, this is my view. We should have three modes, dry, wet, and muck. And call on that. I mean, that would be pretty cool, be unusual. Like the R18's got rock and roll and rain. Um, it could be engineered in for the right conditions and the right settings for those conditions. And that's it. I just want to press the button and it does it. I don't want to have to change anything and look through, have I got it in there? And you don't know which one you're in. It's very complicated. Keep it simple, then you can go back to the retro dial and just have a little display underneath just to let you know what mode you're in. And that would be enough. Now, I'm trying to work out where the bike was made because a lot of people have asked me that. Uh, and it doesn't say. So if you know, does it say? Turn up motorcycles, no, it doesn't say. So I don't know, um, where was it made? Uh, obviously it's a British company and they're designed in uh, Great Britain in England. I believe it's made abroad, but I can't be sure. So uh, comment below and let me know. One of the things you hear about a lot with these bikes is the heat from the exhaust. And yes, it does get hot, but um, not so much so that it's a problem. So I was squeezing my leg on here tight on purpose and it wasn't burning me. Uh, when you touch it after a long ride, it is hot I and mean, you can just about touch it and pat it. Uh, you wouldn't want to hold your hand on there for long. But the, generally, the engine does put out quite a lot of heat. It, it does dissipate the heat, uh, which is what it's supposed to do. So it, you do feel warm. So I'm not in California, so I can't really tell what it would be like in a really hot country. I'd imagine it, it would feel warm, but uh, you can change the exhaust and what have you, because the cat obviously gets ever so hot in there. So if you didn't have that, it would be more free flowing and it wouldn't be so hot. Now, things like changing the traction control, turning them, I can't say that. Things like, start again. Things like, turning off the traction control can be done. Um, it seems to me that when the engine is stopped and you start again, it resets itself to, to the standard. Um, but I do find it a bit confusing, so I can't be 100% on that. You've got a lovely flat bench seat. Perfect, I love them. And there's plenty of space on the back for a pillion. And suspension wise, they're adjustable, so there's no problem there. You can certainly take a pillion passenger on the back. Uh, obviously, depending on your weight, but if you're an average normal weight, it's all been designed for that, so not a problem at all. Now, this little mud guard here, um, I think it's aluminium, it feels, sounds like aluminium. It's not big enough, it looks lovely, but it's not big enough. Now, I haven't cleaned the bike after riding it, and I've only been down some farm tracks and on the road, I haven't been scrambling on it. Uh, but the radiator here is, is thick with mud, and you know the mud guard isn't doing its job of protecting the bike. And these aren't the easiest bikes to clean because there's lots of nooks and crannies, especially if you've got the accessory radiator guard on it, then the mud gets in between that. This hasn't got the accessory light guard either, which is a good thing because you can't clean the light if you've got that on it. So less is more. A bike like this, you want to strip it down to the bare essentials. And I think adding all the different accessories on it isn't a good thing because it spoils the look of it in my mind. Um, but yeah, the mud guards aren't brilliant. The back one, um, there's lots of mud splashed up and there's mud on the seat here. So it's not quite doing its job. And under there, you know, same as any bike really, it gets muddy if you're going in dirty places.
I would also, as I said, change the handlebars and I just desperately would love to have um, twin analog clocks. It, you know, if, it, if you couldn't get them, I don't think I'd part with my own money for it, um, which is a shame really, because it is a good bike. Um, going on to the mirrors, as they come standard, I can see half of the road behind me. Bikes like this, I was thinking just the other day, are going to become a thing of the past soon, uh, 2030, 2035. So really, I'm thinking that I might start buying one or two really beautiful bikes that I like to keep because you don't want to go out in six years time and find that you can only buy an electric bike and all these beautiful motorcycles are a thing of the past. So that's something to bear in mind. So now's the time to go and get one. Uh, if you like it, buy it, keep hold of it. It probably won't lose value. Eventually it's going to be a classic bike. It'll go up in value. I'm sure there's going to be petrol around in the pumps for many years to come. Um, who knows how many, but I'm not going to say any more about that subject, but that's it. Yeah, do it. Buy the bike. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, I've just redesigned some of the t-shirts and put them on again. So have a look at those. And that's about it. So it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him. Goodbye. Don't panic, Captain Mannering. All right, we're in gear.